All right, we back. It's Tariq Rico the Bear from the Bear Effect Podcast YouTube. Uh, like, comment, and subscribe. Hit that thumbs up. Hit that notification button. Let you know on all the updated uploads. Uh, check out that IG for all merch. You see the t-shirts over here. We're trying to establish the tattoo studio. So we're, we're, I'm looking for tattoo artists from all over the Philadelphia area, Collar and Counties, that's Delaware, Montgomery, Bucks. If you're going to make it to wherever we set up, then the more the merrier. Uh, like I said, DM me for merchant ice orders. We got glass engravings, wood burnings. Uh, I'm working on a painting now. I don't paint, but I'm working on a painting now. I think it's pretty good for somebody who don't paint. I draw, but I don't paint. Uh, but anyway, so this is, uh, like I said, the Bear Facts podcast. This is the Tales from the Afterlife uh, segment. And these are just like preliminary stories I'm coming up with over off my head. Brother has lived. Brother has lived. So, like, you know what I mean? Like, right now, I'm like, you know what I mean? Just sharing some cautionary tales, some... I'm not glorifying anything, but like, you know what I mean, it's stuff you live through, you experience to gain that lived experience that you can share with others to prevent some pitfalls, provide some triumphs, whatever. So, uh, a couple segments ago, I was talking about uh, when I saw the people at the top of the, uh, the uh, ramp going onto the street. Now, an extension of that, like, after that, like, I guess that was during the school year, the senior year. So, I was, like, 18, 19, something like that. I feel like sorry I said that. Um, and I got kicked out of multiple schools contributing to my grade failure. But anyway, so, uh, at one of these times, like, the ball, the boys that robbed my homie. They, uh, my homie ended up getting locked up. He got his crib raided and there was a whole thing. Like, and even with that, that was some crazy stuff. Cause it was like, yeah, I mean, there was some stuff involved in the ball. Not like after the one boy who robbed me, at, not at gunpoint, but he flashed the gun. And, you know what I mean? It was like doing your shit. You know what I mean? And he tried to get the work off my young boy, but for what has somehow the, my young boy escaped unscathed. I don't know. Don't ask me. So, uh, after that, uh, I guess my homie was going to confront the boy. And this is separate from the boys who robbed them. Yeah, you know I mean, now, like, don't think shit sweet. Don't ever think shit sweet. It's just like, yeah, you know I mean, stuff happens. And, like, I'll get into other tales at a different time. But this is, like I said, cautionary stories. Like, so, uh, before that, my homie could confront him. Like, he was trapping out of his homie crib, his homie crib that was originally, like, a customer. And then he started getting us uh, bottles of liquor at times because I had, like, a fake ID that I had uh, got. It was my brother's junior ID, but it was faded. So, and, like, you know what I mean? Like, the faded brother. Like, we look like... I'm, I'm darker than him, but it, the picture was faded. So, like I said, from, like, 17 to when this boy started fucking getting us uh, liquor, like, out the liquor store on a regular basis. And even sometimes when he wasn't around, I was grabbing this stuff out the state store. That's what the liquor store in PA is called. So, he was, he was uh, trapping out the boy crib so much, he started living there. And he was just chilling there, and he was chilling there. Just like I said... This the end of the school year. This is no. This is the senior our senior year. Now at this point, he had got kicked out of school and was going to an alternative school. Uh, for a different story, I'll tell at a different time. But uh, so but we still both graduated at the same time, and I guess at some time after graduation, not long after graduation, I know I was I was up in Uptown Philly when uh somebody paged me. That's how long ago it says somebody paged me. Now the white boy paged me. And I was like, yo, what's up? And he was like, yo, they raided Boy Crib. And it was like, they caught him with two, like, I think he had three guns. He had the two nine millimeters and thing. I think he had a tech or some shit like that. <laughs> and he had, like, three pounds of work in the crib. But, like, the person that bought him the, uh, the guns out the store was in the crib. So, like, he, they, and he bought them legally. So, he ain't get charged or nothing like that. 
And they were like, I don't know, because they weren't at his the registered crib, but they weren't on the street, so it wasn't like he needed a carrier's permit. I guess I don't know. I don't remember. They came home a, a couple months later, but anyway. So, they got the spot rated before the boy could confront the other boy. So it was just weird, cause like you know what I mean, the boy robbed me. He went after my young boy, and then like you know what I mean, since my young boy was holding my homie work, he was going. Uh, approach him about it and like confront him or whatever and i'm gonna leave it at that but uh before they could do that they could uh they raided the crib but like the reason why i did that backstory one because like it was all crazy because i never really thought about how it was all interrelated I mean, I mean, but uh even in extension of that like the people i would saw at the top of the ramp who asked like yo where the boy we want to grab some work it's like, I thought it was just uh, another hand-to-hand, -hand, like, simple as that. Like, and I wanted to go get the Dutchess and stuff. And we were all supposed to meet back at the block. So, anyway, so that happened. He got robbed. And then, like, at the end of the school year, they raided his crib. And, like, you know what I mean? And I think even a couple weeks to a couple of days later, they raided his girlfriend's crib that was traveling for him. But I don't remember. I don't remember that. that Both cribs got raided. I don't know how close together, but I think that was pretty close together. And then later on, she was traveling for one of my other homies and got her crib rated, but that's neither here nor there. Um, I ain't saying nobody name, so this is high school. I'm 42, so. So, uh, like I said, I was bringing that up because, like, when they robbed him. Now, this is, like I said, we were closer to them than the other boy that was trying to get at us, I guess. And like I said, I never really looked at it like he was talking to us targeting us but whatever so uh the other crew that robbed him and like i said all the time even the boy with me like he said he was on zans they said they was on zans whatever 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 shit happens uh it's ancient history now like i don't really care but uh after the uh after the boy guys crib raided like at one point i'm sitting on my uh, another homie uh, porch, like, we, every once in a while, we'd show, like, me, the boy that got the crib raided, and this boy would show a lot, but, like, I mean, like, I don't know, he wasn't there for a lot of this other shit, so I'm showing on the boy porch after, uh, my other homie got, uh, not, and, like, yeah, you know I mean, like, a couple of them were there, the boys that, like, a couple of them that weren't involved in the robbery was there, and then, like, yeah, you know I mean, and, like, yeah, you know I mean, like, I ain't, I ain't, I ain't really see no, no threat in it, because, like, they was cool, like, we was around each other, we smoked, just like, uh, like, it was a bunch of people I smoked reefer with, like, all, I smoked reefer every day, all day in high school, so, like, yeah, I mean, and I was selling it, so, like, yeah, I mean, but, uh, like, they didn't try me, but they was going, like, I, I felt like they was about, uh, they was going to do some shady shit, like, ask me for a bag and then walk off, but I ain't never give them a bag, I'm like, you know, something like, yeah, I mean, I was smart enough, like, yeah, I mean, but later in that day, like, you know what I mean, the people, my homie hit me, because I guess I was the only one selling at the time, because he, he usually had work, but I guess he ain't had work, and the boy was locked up, and the other boy was out of state, and, like, he hit me up, was like, yo, I'm gonna send them down to you and I'm like all right like yeah you know I mean like like I I knew I knew like I said the people we was on the porch with but like I also knew the other boys that the boys on the porch fuck with and they was the ones that uh robbed the ball and um he said that it was the ball from the porch but for some reason again I don't know just a premonition like I'm like all right so I gave him my neighbor address. You got on. No, I think I told him to meet me at, uh, across the street at the church. Because, like, back then, I don't think too many people knew where I lived. You know what I mean? So, I told him to meet me at the church because I'm not going to give you my home address. I'm just not. <laughs> but uh, somehow he knew where I lived. So, I was outside and I was, like, in a cut, like, where I could see everything, but I, you know what I mean, so, like, if it was the boy from the porch, it was like, you know what I mean, I knew it would have been good, it would have been all right, but, like, you know what I mean, I knew he fucked with the other boys, so, like, I wasn't scared of nothing, but I wasn't stupid enough, neither, so I'm in the cut, I'm peeping, and I peep who pull up, and it's like, it, I don't remember if it was the hatchback or whatever, but they, clown car full of niggas, like, you know what I mean, I don't even know if the boy was in there, but once I seen that, I'm like, oh, they they on some funny shit. Like, you know what I mean? So I dip off and I come to my crib. 
Now, like the church is basically three houses down and across the street and the school is directly across the street, but they're like linked, but they're close except for the church to reopen the church, but that's neither here nor there. So somehow they come to my crib, you know what I mean? I don't even think the boy that sent them knew where I lived at the time, like, you know what I mean? Because nobody was allowed in my crib when I was growing up. I snuck them in, but no, nobody was allowed in. Um, so they knock on my door, and it's the two boys, it's two of the boys out of, I think it was like four niggas that was tussling with my homie that robbed him. It was three boys and a chick, and two of the main boys, like one I graduated with and the other was younger than me, but they was from a neighborhood over there, not the neighborhood up there, but over there, and not the uh, little homie neighborhood that he moved to. But uh, they came to my door, and I'm like, you know what I mean? I answered the door, and I'm like, you know what I mean? I knew they was... I knew they was traveling with a revolver. I, I knew that. I knew they was traveling with the revolver. Like, I don't think they pulled it on my homie, but I knew somehow where, again, word got back to me. They was traveling around with a revolver. So, like, you know what I mean? I opened the door or whatever. We, like, I already knew what type of time they was on. I'm like, nah, we good. Like, go ahead. Like, you know what I mean? So, they try to push. They went into the crib. And, like, you know what I mean? I stand my ground or whatever. I end up, I don't remember if I pushed them or I, like, kicked them. But, However, I got it. I got it out, got them from running in the crib, and then I shut the door, and that was that. But you know, um, beef with Riley Cruz, like, I don't know. One, like, I bought crack brass at the door. Beef with Riley Cruz, one might be the mother of the son who sells drugs. Co workers won't see me on the corner, it's like Larry would love. But meanwhile, you working like two or three jobs trying to feed me and my siblings, trying to make it honest. Who am I kidding? I call myself easing the load. I made the little heavy. I need money for commentary. Trying to understand me. That's Jay. But yeah, you know I mean. Now, I don't think I told my mama that story until like yeah, you know I mean. Now, funny story. Like when I got kicked out of the uh, Catholic school. Like when I got kicked out of the Catholic school, the uh, high school. Like, like I said, I was fifteen. I was about to turn sixteen, and I got kicked out. And this is the last school I got kicked out. And I had got, I was, like I said, in and out of like uh, six schools. And I don't think that's including the elementary school I went to in Philly when I was a young boy before I, but I went to a lot of school. I went to the Catholic school. I went to Ardmore Avenue school. There was shit that, that's a completely different fight story. And that that's a different, like that was probably the school. I was only there for one year, but I had the most fights like physical fights in that school like the catholic school like don't even ask me i ain't getting no physical fights but like i was like a terrorist in there like i don't know like i said out of 100 probably plus years the school was operational i was the first person that got suspended i was the first person to get expelled and i was the first person they implemented uh in school suspension on and then they closed two years after i left that school so i don't even know if anybody else got into a school suspension or a out of school suspension but and i'm not saying that to brag it's like i don't even know because i wasn't even i know at one point i stole some money from a teacher just third grade i was out of my mind but anyway um so when i uh got kicked out of the high school the bonner bonner high school this is after they told me that i can't come back to the junior high in my neighborhood that was eighth grade but uh, the, cause eighth grade, I was fighting this boy like all the time. I was fighting different people. I was fighting this one boy all the time. And I remember how that popped off. That popped off, we was in art class and the ball, we was both fat at the top. And the ball, he was, he started, he started heckling me. Like, yeah, you know I mean, so like, I just was like, yeah, you know I mean, yeah. You all, uh, I, I can slim down. You always gonna be ugly. And then, like, from then on, it was like, you know what I mean? Because he was got more aggressive than, like, I was a terrorist. So, you know what I mean? Eventually, I was just start punching on him every day. But, uh, but when, that was eighth grade. So, I went to the, they told me that I came home. I didn't say anything. I was just, like, spent the summer begging to go to the, uh, you know what I mean? <clears throat> so, I don't know if they knew or not, but, like, I know what I was told, like, you know what I mean? But, so, I went to the, uh, Catholic high school. This is the one where I fought the ball for the other ball. And um, I'll get into how I got kicked out of that at another time. But there was an incident at that school. Or no, there was an incident I ended up getting kicked out. 
Now, the weird thing was, like, I got kicked out and I walked to where my mom had a business at. She had a clothing boutique. And I, it was, like, two miles down from the school. So I walked down to school. I had my two homies with me. We walk in. I'm straight asshole. And I'm, like, just all matter of fact. I got kicked out. And my mom ain't seen nothing. Now, throughout my life to get in trouble, I, I got to beat down there, too. But, you know. I don't know, at that point, this ninth grade, my mom ain't saying nothing. So then, like, for, like, two weeks, my mom ain't saying nothing, and I just went on being the asshole I was. That literally, that's all I could say, like, straight asshole. So I just went on being the asshole I was, and then, um, like, still playing the streets. Like, Shane, Shane ain't saying nothing. My dad ain't saying nothing. I ain't, I ain't get put on punishment. I ain't get... Don't ask me. And, like, I, I, they didn't put, like, I didn't transfer back to the public school right away. But, uh, so, like, I'm walking around like life is a peach. I don't know. Don't ask me. I'm, I'm still in the streets. I'm still doing dumb shit. Like, you know what I mean? I'm still, like, I don't give a fuck. Like, fuck that shit. Like, I don't know. I'm 42 now. I was 16 then. I, I don't even know what my mindset it was. I know school start. And uh, September back then, I knew I was out of that school before my birthday in October. So, uh, I know, like, so two weeks went by and nobody said nothing to me. Nobody disciplined, nobody yelled, nobody screamed, which was really weird because, no, no, no. But I guess at this point, they was just like, this nigga out of his goddamn mind. I don't know what's wrong with this motherfucker. I, that's the only words I can put it in. I'm sorry. I, I've changed my life, but my language still the same. Fuck this shit. <laughs> um, so, like, yeah, I mean, at this point, like, I don't know. So, I guess after, like, two weeks, like, I, my mom say she don't remember this stuff. And I ain't delusional. Uh, like, I vividly remember. Like, I came in the back door because that's the door we all use. It was the back door. So, I came in the back door. My mom's... Uh, putting up dishes and stuff and like i don't know what i was thinking when i hit the back door i was just, i hit the back door but as soon as i hit the back door she just like turned me and like she threw a plate at my feet then she threw another plate at my feet and i don't know if you know if she said anything but you know being the jackass asshole i was i was all defensive and hot like man 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 so i go up to my room and you know what i mean like you know what i mean so i'm all hot but, like, you know what I mean? She, I don't remember, she didn't really say nothing all crazy or nothing like that. Like, you know what I mean? But uh, I went to my room. I turned the music on. I'm about to blast Power 99. That's the Philly radio station and stuff. And as soon as I turned, no bull, like, as soon as I turned the fucking uh, radio on, Tupac, Dear Mama came on. And I was like, and it just, like, floored me. Like, it just floored me that you all appreciate it. And, like, you know what I mean? From that point on... I was like, I was going to stop getting in trouble now. In full disclosure, in full honesty, I did stop getting in trouble. Like, I still, I did stop getting in trouble. I don't think I got in any trouble when I returned to the uh, public school. And when I, and that would have been the junior high still, like, because it was a weird structure of how you progress. But anyway, and then, like, I really ain't getting no trouble in the high school, I don't think. Like, that was, like, my high school years was my best, like, as far as getting in trouble at school, I think in the three years, I might have had one in-school suspension and a couple detentions, and that was it, like, but, um, like, yeah, like, the full disclosure and full honesty, like, I, I wasn't behaving bad, better, unfortunately, I was just better at not getting caught. Which, like I said, was unfortunate. And then, like, around that same time, like, I had this math teacher. Like, it was my favorite teacher of all time. And I'll go through that at another time. But it was, like, my favorite teacher of all time. And I was, like, I, I, I was known for cutting up. Like, even seventh grade in a reading class, I sparked up a J. And, like, I put it out. Like, I sparked it, hit it, and put it out. It was during, like, one of the movies. Like, we were watching the movie. And don't ask me how the teacher ain't know. She was a little, like, she was a little... Some people might say ditzy, but like, and I'm not trying to be disrespectful, but you know what I mean? Uh, but she ain't even bad an eyelid. She ain't even look up. Like she was at her desk doing whatever the hell she was doing in the dark. And I was toward the wall and I sparked up and I put it out, but that was seventh grade. I was, I was like, <laughs> so then, um, 
like I said, when I came back, like, I just didn't get in any more trouble after that. But, like I'm saying, in total, I went to, I wouldn't even count Greenville because I went there up until second grade. And then I went that same, I failed when I left Greenfield in Philly. And I came out here and they were saying, like, the schools out here are more advanced, so you got to be held back, whatever. They held my brother back, too. He was in, he was in fifth grade. And um, I went to St. Louis from second to sixth grade. I got kicked out, got held, held back. I went to the junior high for like two weeks and then I was like, oh yeah, it turns out you don't got enough credits, you gotta enroll. And then um, I was in the sixth grade at Ardmore Avenue. So that's like what, like right there, that's what school three. Um, but I don't really count uh, whatever that is, Greenfield. So then, um, like, that was the school I fought at the most, and I still have behavioral problems. Like, that's why I brought up, like, St. Louis and stuff. Like, I ain't never fight nobody in St. Louis, and I still got kicked out now. I still got, you know what I mean, whatever. But uh, then I was able, like, they kicked me out at the end of the year. So it was like I had every requirement filled that I had to advance. So I got to advance, but I got kicked out at the end of the year. And then, um, like I said, I got asked to leave kicked out of the junior high in eighth grade. I got kicked out of the Catholic high school and ninth grade. And then I went back to the junior high, graduated from the junior high, then went to the high school. And then it was like, no, nah, done. And like, I was just saying like, it was just surreal to me. Like, yeah, you know I mean, when I went up and I was hot, I was like an asshole. Like I said, like, yeah, you know I mean, I was completely in the wrong, completely defensive, like whatever, clinically. <laughs> And, uh, like I said, I hit that Power 99. It wasn't a CD, it wasn't a cassette, it wasn't a tape. And when I was young, me and my mama had me 16 years old, kicked out on the street. Now, luckily, with all the trouble I've been in, my parents never was like, you gotta roll. Like, my dad would always be like, all right, like, you don't gotta go. When you 18, you gotta go. Like, and, like, a, a couple times when me and my ex-girlfriends broke up, it's like, I felt like I had to bribe my way back in the crib. But after bribing my way back in the crib, at that point, I had my daughter, and I had changed my life. And it was like, you know what I mean? Even when I went to Florida, like, starting when I went to Florida, like, that's when I really started changing my life. Because, like I said, I was sitting, living down there and just living regular. Nine to five, weekends off, barely smoking reefer, like, blackout drunk is from age like 16 uh, before i went to florida that's a different story that's not even for this that's a future story like you know what i mean but so it was like that was like the first taste of normalcy i got and then like i said i came back we got in trouble and then i was like the end of the street life and it was like you know what i mean just normal and then i got with my kids back with my kids mom after me and my ex broke up and we had the kid and Basically, I said all that because, like, when, after bribing my way back in and they seen how the type of dad I was and the responsibility, like, like niggas on the street knew, like, I was good with money. Like, I always joke, like, my 800 at, right now I'm getting hit with mad cyber fraud, cyber crimes and fraud. So my 800 on the streets in high school is my 800 officially in, like, Equifax TransUnion. But, like, you know, with all the cyber crimes and fraud and stuff like that, I'm being hit with, like, that's, like, the, a dip in my credit. But, like, that's just to say, like, you know what I mean? I ain't never short nobody as far as, like, you know what I mean? Business-wise on the streets. And same thing in business-wise in real life. And, like I said, even then, like, I was paying rent. I, like, I told them I'd pay rent. I'd do this, I'd do that. Like, to get back in the grid, like, it's like, So, like, you know what I mean? I was doing that, and like I said, like, they would see me, like, I'm a mad junk food eater, so, like, they would see me put balanced meals on the table that I've made myself. Like, I'm, I'm give me a dollar burger, and we out, nigga, like, daily dollar burger, and we out. But, like, you know what I mean? I was, like, starch, vegetable, protein, uh, yogurt for dessert and some fruit or some shit like that. So they were saying, like, you know what I mean? And I was taking my kid to school, picking her up after school. And, like, most of the week, my kid was spending with me, and then she would go to her mom's house. But that ends another segment. We'll be back. Like, comment, subscribe, The Bear Facts Podcast. Check us out on Instagram, The Bear Canvas Tattoo Studio. Hit uh, that like button. Hit that notification button. Hit me up in DMs. Get that merch. Check it out.